Hey, Jonathan. Hey. Hey, Emily. How are you today? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. How are you? Good. Just uh, new house and new new uh, new orientation. No, new orientation. I finally got a desk put together. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's slowly making my way closer to my office. It's only been locked down for a, a number of months, but <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, no, like uh, I've got. I'm building an office above my garage and yep. we're almost done mudding, which means we get to sand this weekend and get like the primer on the walls. So I started in like the living room and then I went to the dining room and now I have a desk. So I have all my monitors set up and like, I'm getting closer to it physically. <laughs> Excellent. Now I know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. I'm going through the paper. Um, yeah, me trying, too. trying to get, uh, some of the commentary closed out. I, I've just done a load of it. I might have been coming up behind you. I think there's like three or four questions left. Um, yeah, I'm going. That's I'm, about it. I'm at the golden image part right now. I, I shot past the golden image, but I wanted to ask. Maybe it's a, an English thing, um, but um, I've always referred to it as a golden image. Is, so is a Genesis it, image, a thing. No, so here, here's the deal, um, and this is me trying to like undo decades of bad practices. Um, so the concept of a golden image is traditionally like the source, the thing of which everything else occurs, and right. it's usually like the most controlled. You can use it as an independent verification tool to be like, hey, or, or at least within like defense systems, you have mm. this team that produces a golden image and then you have another team that goes through a similar process and creates a deliverable packaged good and mm -hmm. then you compare the two of them so any deviations from that from the packaged good that are different than the golden image are problematic mm -hmm. so it's like that um usually like when i hear the term golden image i think of it's this thing that sits on a pedestal and like the angel choirs sing and there's light coming down from the heavens on it and it's like you don't touch it the problem is is that a lot of instances where golden images occur as the source of truth they often go unmaintained so like once an organization produces this they never update it because it's good we don't touch it and that's a cultural change. So part of the reason why changing this to Genesis image is to get us out of the habit of like all of the baggage that comes with that terminology. Mm. And that in this particular case, it's not quite a golden image from the original use of the term. Yeah. Do we need to explain that in the document then? Cause that, um, that's a bit of a change to the way I use the term, but uh, so so that's the problem. Is like the term "golden image" is a very overloaded term, and the yeah. only reference that we have to explaining what this new thing is is the base container image of which the build worker is based. Yeah, which you could probably just call it a base image, a base worker image, and be done with it. And then you avoid all of the baggage that comes with things like mm. golden image, meaning it's good enough and we never touch it. But that that's why I'm trying to like, yeah. I'm trying to read through Justin's comments. I get his concern. I think it's a valid concern because it, it's, it's very overloaded. I try mm. to avoid golden image whenever I can because mm. it's just a bad history there. Mm. So if we want to call it Genesis image, if we want to call it base builder image, Maybe that's maybe that's more explicit and clear. Well, I guess base image is maybe clearer. I'm just trying to figure out is that does that pertain to the the entirety of the context? Well, so the only other reference I think that we have is in that same section, and I have not gone through and done a control F on this. Um, is the build environment consists of all the content required for the build, including the sources for the build and any of its dependencies, excluding any tooling provided by the build image. Yeah, we've we've got four instances of that. Three of them are in that same section, and one of them's way down below in uh, containers as build workers. Again, same context, though. 
Yeah. So I think if we're, if we're going to make the change, it needs to be consistent because yeah. we're really, we're genuinely not talking about a golden image and it's traditional sense. We're talking about the base image and that this is the thing that is not part of your software product. It's not part of the end mm. result of what's being built. It is an ephemeral object that is spun up, serves its purpose and disappears. Mm. I'd go with base, but but um, Michael, Alex, you know, any any thoughts? We, 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 you know, we're, we're discussing in the image about um, there's a section on page twenty four, build step and worker. When we've got a, we're, we're talking about the, you know, point one, a golden image, is what's used to base the uh, build worker upon. Gold image, Genesis image, or, or or in real reality, a base image. Yeah, so I'm, I, I've changed it to worker image for the purposes of this conversation to kind of make it a little bit simpler. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I think actually, in fact, I might have been the one who originally called it golden image, but I think I was also ignorant of all the history behind what what golden image uh, has meant in in much of the community. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those like, what, what tech is uh, 1942, I think. So it's well over. It's it's almost in retirement age at this point. Um, but the term golden image goes back, uh, I think, like 80s and 90s. So I'm good with worker base image. Okay, let's go with worker base yep, image. Same. And then we should probably just provide a little bit more of a clarity explanation about why it's included excluded um, so i just added as this tooling is not part of the end product being built And hopefully that should alleviate Justin's concerns. And I, I can, uh, I'll make a note to chat him yep. to double check that section. Uh, let me hit that golden thing again. Worker base image binaries from the worker. Image. One more down the bottom. All right, I've changed it in the other places too. Okay. All right. So what was next? Justin's got a comment on the set UID GUID. Here should be run with these privileges. I linked to this comment as generally GUID should be the same. It is true. Many people use it. Um, so I would agree that we need to say the build container should be run with the least privileges. Sorry, which which where are we now? Uh, build pipeline to create build stages. If you, yep. I think I'm logged in. So if you're in a Google Doc and somebody is doing something and you need to find out where they are, click on their icon and you will automatically be taken to where they are in the dock. Which one are you? Oh, I should be logged in. Oh, apparently I'm not. I don't know what I am. All right, never you mind. <laughs> I think I'm in the right place. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Um, hey, Richard. Avoid, avoiding obvious impediments to security. Configured with least privilege. 
in the build containers. I think. C can we just add on the first sentence that it should be? Yeah, that's with? what I was trying to figure out is like, where where does it fit best? I think either the first sentence or a new sentence at the very end of the paragraph would be my two thoughts. From a minimal image. I think, think it's a strong point, right? I guess my, my view might be at the front of that. Yeah. Do you want to take a stab at it? Or sure. Me too? Okay. It's li literally running with least privilege. Um, should we specify how we can do that? Um, rootless. Oh, you're now. I got to go back and think about which um, which builds use rootless. Is it builda? No, builda's got a backdoor root in it. It's not like truly rootless. Hodman? We could just we we could just make a reference to um, the rootless container site, which has. Um articles on uh hold on let me, let me find that it's been a while since i've been there there we go I at the spot? I think I'm at the spot. Insert footnote. There. Okay. Awesome. So we have that. And then I think we should add the footnote about the, the set UID. And we could just generally, this should be disabled in a high assurance build environment. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to accept that comment then, right? Yep. I've already resolved that comment. Relevant information. But from Justin's, yeah. Cool. Yep, yep. Still getting used to a new keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> We can fix formatting later. All right. You done? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I'll accept that other comment too, right? Resolve, sorry. Yeah, so I, yep. I'm going to ping Justin in the channel. Just so he's aware, he'll get the email. So I think the next one's down to like page 31, 32. Yeah, I'm, I'm down there. <laughs> okay, let me read through this. Reproducible builds improve on this by enabling us to. It's confusing. The previous paragraph in the G's verifiable to two. Oh, you know what it is? We talk about um, deterministic builds, so I think it just needs to be moved around. Don't press this one. Yeah, so the way I read this, it's I think what we're saying is a deterministic build is a, a verifiably reproducible build is a step above a deterministic build. Is that what right. we're trying to say here? <laughs> yeah, and that's not how we introduce it. We, I mean, it is, but we kind of sandwich that statement, which right. makes it very yeah. confusing. So. OK, 
okay, does this now that I move things, does this read this build is equivalent of it? Yeah, that's better. Very fun. Yeah, that's a lot better, I think. I think if I accept all of these comments, it'd be easy to read. Yep. yep. Okay. Let me. Um... I think I got rid of that uh, hanging paragraph there so that those, if you accept that last one, it should merge everything in. Yeah, I think it looks good. So I have a another question. Are we still using the term IT anymore? <laughs> <laughs> like you usually in conversations we refer to the industry or the community or the system, the application. Let's go blanket nerd. Software industry, how about that? <laughs> That's fine. It was just, it was very strange. I don't think I've used that in quite a while. How about software industry or something like that? That's fine. We've also got IT systems in the next area. So just change that to systems. Also, Trojanized is a word now. <laughs> What's I have, that? I have seen this twice in the past two days, the word Trojanized. We have it wow. in the blog and we have it here. I like it. I like it. You can I... use it to, 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 there's a psychological component to it. I went in this meeting and Trojanized the outcome. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's an awesome term and it's like... I, I've never heard of it before, like the paper and the blog, and I'm in love with it. You know, when you type in Trojanized, the, the very next, if you put it in Google, it just says Trojanized solar winds. <laughs> I guess that's one way to like, just try to rebrand solar winds a little bit better. <laughs> Literally, it's oh, no. Trojanized meaning and then solar winds. Yeah. <laughs> They rebranded to Enable, which just is hilarious to me. Trojanized. Yeah, it's a thing. What size are footnotes supposed to be? 10? What's going on with the uh, that highlighting? What is that? Is that some weird highlighting on the word trojanized now, or, or what? No, I don't see it. It looks clean to me. Oh, weird. That's odd. It looks like, okay. Yeah, I've got some weird highlighting on it on my copy for some reason. Okay. Yeah. 
you have control F or something. See if I can spell it today. This is eleven, and should be that color. Okay. Why is it different? Oh. Okay, now that I'm hopefully done fussing about with the font, I don't, I don't know, somebody asked to fix the font. Google Docs hates me. It's not letting me do it. What's wrong with the font? Let me, let me just apply the thing to start with it. It's supposed to be Arial 11, not Roboto 10 and a half. Uh, what the hell? Okay. There you go. Awesome. Someone fixed it or am I? No, Imagine no. fixed when you accepted the change. Oh, damn it. <laughs> there we go. Yay. All right. So this should fix Justin's last or last comment here. Let me delete that. Is the font color the same? No. Damn it. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's gray. Are you serious? Yeah, I, it's been killing me all morning. I have like these new monitors and now I can notice font color distinguishes <laughs> at that level. Wow. Yeah, the easiest way to tell is if you click the end of the sentence and you click up higher in the paragraph, if the little um, text color icon turns white, like it indicates that there's an inconsistent color between your selection. So I've changed it to black. Well, I, I don't ever found that, that's for sure. I'm learning all sorts of new things about Google Docs in this uh, this journey, I tell you. This is this is now my preferred uh, preferred editor. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, here's what happened there. Follow. Is that all all the comments? What? I thought there was some at the bottom. Yeah, there's loads down at uh, 40 okay. something. Yeah. yeah they they get Whoops, someone did that. Oh. oh, these are, um, what's going on here? Prior art and references. We don't need the word ref in front of these things, right? No. It was a silly mistake before I accepted the uh, Y and then it was a different position, but. No worries. I'm just deleting the ref and then putting it like that, right? And we need these in bold as well, right? Yeah. I think I will need to be like that. Uh, I, I'm, hmm. I'm not sure I entirely agree with the first part of the appendix statement on containers. Feel free to, I, I was attempting to uh, to rewrite it based on my own confusion around the highlighted part from how it was originally written, but like, feel free to rip into it and change it around. <laughs> I mean, generally it's one app can be consistent of several microservices so it's really one or more than one microservice for one container. Like it's, um, what is it? Maybe app isn't the right word there, but. Um, 
it, like there's supposed to be a term that talks about like minimal functionality and like separating the different functional components to do the one thing that they do well and encapsulate them such that they do that thing that's that's the genesis of why um libraries exist you write a library to do a thing right um so we could just get rid of that and then there's no arguments about the statement mm -hmm. um here it holds the components of a container and that they are given open that any given container may include numerous software components supplied by multiple vendors. Ah, so I think the clarity here should be called out as both and that container bloat is a problem, cite a reference to what we mean. Maybe subject to container bloat. What is the paragraph actually there to provide, right? It's a good question. You refer to it in the document. Yeah, so, so we've got like containers, right? And, and it explains what a container is. It's got container, base container images, containers as workers. Docker files in here, multi-stage Docker files. We, I'm just wondering, it's a bit, it's a little bit muddled because it's, yeah. are we trying to explain what a container is? Oh, that's a good question. We really should not be explaining that. Um, I'm all for just deleting that entire paragraph. Yeah, well, I think we probably could get away with that, right? Okay. This is the appendix. Do we really need an introduction to the appendix, or can we just jump jump right into base container images? There yeah, we go. Maybe, yeah. It's gone. Um, I'm just going to delete the thing. Rather than accept okay. your, because I'm going to get lost trying to accept all of the comments. Yeah, no, you don't need to. Cool. We need to drop a. Is that all right in the spacing? Is that all right? No, that's all right. So, so the only question here then is, right, okay, so we've got a containers appendix. It tells us about base container images. It tells us about containers as build workers. And then it talks about Docker files and multi-state Docker files and configuration files. Shouldn't slimming container images be a uh, heading up? Because right now it's sitting underneath of Docker files. Yeah, yeah, it should. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to run in like two or three minutes. All right, there. That's bumped up. That's the end. Awesome. This is fabulous. I'm excited. So what's the next stage, Emily? I think we've we've had co comments open for a while. We've gone through lots of comments, um, updating it and such. So right now, um, we finalize it. Uh, the next SIG meeting, we should do a status update to let them know that it's been finalized and that we're going to start working with the CNCF to get it published. Um, and I need to look up what that process is because it's been a long time. Um, I think we start with an issue that gets submitted to the CNCF uh, service desk to get support for conversion to a PDF as well as conversion to Markdown. Um, we need to clean up the supply chain part of the repo to ensure that this has a place for it because I don't think we have a paper section. So we, as a SIG, need to decide where we're putting our papers, how we're managing them. Um, like the cloud native security paper is a general one. That's fine at a top level, but a supply chain paper, we already have a supply chain part of the repo. Right. It might make sense to like 
disentangle some of that. Um, so that maybe uh, somebody should drop that on the agenda for the next SIG meeting to figure out what it is that we're going to be doing as far as paper management um, within the SIG. Yeah. Cool. And, and in terms of this document, are we, you know, given the agenda, are we still open for comments and keep that open? Nope. Or just we're shut done. It? Yeah. Shut it down. Ray. So um, if someone could add to next SIG meeting agenda, paper management, because we're, we're close to being done, um, I will uh, attempt sometime this week to uh, contact the folks that I worked with last time on the paper to figure out what the correct process is, because I think we stumbled through things last time. Um, other than that, reviewing the blog, the draft blog, and making sure that it's consistent, we should be good to go. Awesome. So Congratulations, everyone. That was cool. That was, there's a lot of really good material in there. So there really, is. Really cool. it, it's exciting. It was a momentous feat. Several <laughs> months. That was right. significantly longer. And uh, yeah. Than but enjoyable expected. but enjoyable yeah. that's for sure cool all right all right i gotta run have fun everyone congratulations take a break enjoy kubecon thank you very much thanks everyone bye thanks thanks alex for oh he's gone he did a load of work on that it was really good yeah a lot of editing yeah all right we'll catch up yep on the other side all right yeah Okay.